I feel much better now. Doctor, I have a doubt. Is Ayurveda pseudo scientific? Wikipedia says so. Look at this, doctor. What can we say? Ah, the classic old query. <laughs> the scientificity of Ayurveda. But first, what is science anyway? Is it only something that people in white coats do in a lab? No, right? Science is simply a method. A method that demands you to observe diligently, ask questions about it, form a hypothesis, test it, analyze the results and then repeat the cycle. See, it's that simple and you do science every day. When you are brushing your teeth, making a cup of coffee or when you are watching this video on your phone. Ayurveda is not hmm. a propaganda tool. Ayurveda. To make something scientific, you need to follow the scientific method. And that's the key. Absolutely. Um, first, for something to be considered scientific, it has to be based on, you know, measurable observations that we can make through our senses. You know, a principle called empiricism. Hmm. Also, we need to test and prove or disprove what we observed. This is called falsifiability and testability. Additionally, other people should be able to do the same tests and get the same results. It is called repeatability. But the question is, does Ayurveda follow the scientific method? Hmm. Empiricism is the strongest metric of Ayurveda. In fact, the very foundation of Ayurveda is Pratyaksham or direct observations. Actually, Ayurveda has made many observations which were deemed incorrect initially, but proven accurate later. The skin having more than three layers is just one of those examples. Exactly. And also, many of those clinical examinations are uh, directly based on uh, observations. Yes. I think another example is uh, how you can use keen observation to categorize modern dermatological conditions under the 18 types of skin diseases mentioned in Ayurveda. In most cases, yes, we can test what is said in Ayurveda, starting from foundational concepts like the dosha prakriti to uh, drug efficacies and treatment methodologies. All these are testable and falsifiable. But you know, I have certain doubts about some claims, especially those uh, Rasayana formulations which claim to give you hundreds of years of longevity. <laughs> if you are any of those people who have taken any of those Rasayanas and is still alive and watching this video, this would be a great time to come out and declare. Probably the biggest reason why Ayurveda has flourished despite being several millennia old is because of its repeatability. Hmm. Let me give you one example. You know, there are very specific step-by-step -step processes by which uh, Ayurvedic medicines are made. And if you make any medicine with uh, these steps in place and give it in the right time, in the right dose for the right condition, it has always been giving the same results. Exactly. Uh, even the most modern surgical tools ended up looking very similar to what Susruta has described thousands of years ago. And if that's not repeatability, I don't know what it is. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, to sum up, Ayurveda largely follows this uh, scientific method uh, and any scientific uh, system for it to become a science and stay so, it has to follow the scientific process. Exactly. Uh, maybe to be more specific, Ayurveda may be the epitome of Shastra or may have all characteristics of science, but it has to go through the contemporary tools and techniques to reprove it. Spot on. And let me also add to that. Uh, Shastra or science or whatever it be, if it doesn't benefit humanity at large, it's gonna end up uh, fossilized or even replaced eventually. But Ayurveda thriving for all these millennia itself is validating its credibility. Pseudoscience tends to be full of contradictory, exaggerated and untestable claims. And there are such elements in centuries old Ayurveda literature which may seem off today. But modern Ayurveda has moved away from all those claims. Today, the focus is on practical applications that have stood the test of time. So calling Ayurveda a proto-science may still be fine, but calling it pseudoscience is outright incorrect and absurd. I think it's the quacks and illegitimate manufacturers that tarnish Ayurveda's name. 
and tempt many to call it a pseudoscience. Fraudulent practices in Ayurveda mostly stem from gaps or oversight at the governmental, uh, in industrial, academic, and regulatory agencies. However, this has started to change because these agencies have started to collaborate and commonly fight quackery and uh, standardize the system altogether. Also, uh, politicizing Ayurveda and framing it as a religious practice undermines its credibility as a medical system. Uh, we need internal reforms. Dismissing criticism or attacking critics personally should stop. And I think, it, you know, uh, the Ayurveda doctors, they should up their communication game. Because if they are not able to communicate, you know, explain what Ayurveda is, to the others in a language that they can understand who is going to do this. Exactly. Actually, there are many significant developments that are happening in this front. Uh, this includes standardization of terminologies and including them in ICD-11 and also potential collaborations. Interdisciplinary collaborations with AIMS, WHO, John Hopkins, etc. Yeah. Yes. So, investing in these peer-reviewed studies, uh, enhancing the practice-based evidence systems and data collection, uh, fostering uh, interdisciplinary collaborations and revamping the BAMS syllabus are all steps in the right direction. The critics are actually busy hurling uh, allegations and often fail to see the breakthrough Ayurveda is making. One such example is the Prop 65 complaints that one of the Kale's products has achieved in the US. Hmm. Actually, the push from the critics is taking Ayurveda further on the road of uh, scientific progress. Uh, look at the CTRI reports, for example. Uh, the clinical trials, the number of clinical trials that was conducted in the year 2014 was somewhere around uh, 54. But in 2019, it jumped to 655. Wow, that's great. I think we should discuss on how Ayurveda can continue its progress from being a proto-science to becoming a science. Hey, why don't we meet up and make a list? 1. Stop these mythological and mystical overclaims like fever originated from the third eye of Rudra or we should be able to test and prove it. 2. Embrace scientific scrutiny. If your practice works, it will hold up to testing. If it doesn't, improve it. 3. Ayurveda is not a propaganda tool. Ayurveda is not a make-believe system. It is a professional healthcare system. So, keep things ethical. 4. Stop mapping everything to modern correlation. Ama is not toxin. It is Ama. Rajeshma is not TB. Just explain things in the Ayurvedic way, but logically. 5. Keep documenting, keep testing and keep publishing. And if Ayurveda gets these right, it can lead the global shift to preventive, personalized and sustainable healthcare. The preservation mode of Ayurveda is long over. Now, let's talk progressive Ayurveda. <laughs>